Today I'm diving into Kling's motion control, a feature built into their video AI model 2.6. What makes it so interesting? You get full control over complex movements and their precise reconstruction, including body dynamics, hand gestures, facial expressions and even lip sync, and all that for clips up to 30 seconds long. When Kling says copy any action, recreate every expression, my fingers start twitching and my eyes wander toward the remaining credits, because it's that time again, time to test. But first, let me show you a few examples. Then we'll take a closer look at how it works. And finally, you'll get a short summary and one alternative suggestion. My tests cover the motion control use cases Kling defines, perfectly synchronized full body motions, masterful performance of complex moves, and precision in hand gestures. The motion reference comes from a master performer demonstrating each sequence. What you're seeing here are typical examples. And by the way, no matter which platform you use for motion control, this setup gives you a solid starting point to define deliberate, character-driven movement. Example 1. First, the reference video. A guy bouncing around full of energy. To test lip sync, I added one thing. He's supposed to shout angrily while moving. The reference image is in the bottom left. Now, with match video turned on and no extra prompt, this is the result. The character in this stylized illustration look follows the motion flow without any trouble. Example two, this time the master performer gets handed a guitar. He's supposed to play a full on music solo. The goal, our avatar should use the same instrument with full intent. Again, match video is enabled, no extra prompt added, and you can see how the result hits exactly that tone, the gold chains in place, and the air guitar plays. Example three. Since we're already in rhythm, here's a version with drums. To create the motion reference, I use the prompt the man wildly plays an invisible drum kit, striking the air with intense, energetic drumming motions. When we apply that to our reference image, the result is unexpected. With match video enabled, the AI forces the character to stand upright, but there's not enough room, so we only get part of the body. That's the moment we realize image and video need to match. On the second try, I simply made the person smaller in the frame, and suddenly it works. Example four takes us into martial arts territory. The prompt was, the man performs a fast, continuous combo of kung fu fighting movements, striking the air with precise punches, sharp kicks, and flowing defensive blocks against invisible opponents. This gave me a 10 second motion reference. When passed on to our pirate via match video, he follows the sequence exactly. But anyone watching closely will notice the problem right away. The background stays frozen, and that breaks the illusion. Sure, you could say, just add it to the prompt. And that's what I tried in the second run. Flags flutter in the wind, ships gently sway with the waves, and people move subtly in the background. But as you'll see, that didn't change a thing. Ever been to Goa in India? The gentleman we're looking at clearly has. For example five, I used a dance sequence as motion reference and selected match image without adding a prompt. The result is a highly energetic scene. Camera movement, as usual, is mostly left to the AI. And unlike the pirate example, you'll notice the water in the background is actually animated. One quick lesson here, always make sure your person isn't holding anything. In the first attempt, bottom left, he still had a surfboard, but as you can see, it simply disappears midway through the video. You can also use special photographic setups. In example six though, we start once again with the motion reference. This guy enthusiastically pointing in all directions. When I select match image without adding any prompt, this is what we get. A surprisingly solid result. Interestingly, the AI felt like animating the background this time. The person on the left shifts slightly, the ropes on the right sway. It's these small movements that make the scene feel believable and therefore usable. And finally, example seven, a much tougher challenge for the AI. The rule is clear, characters shouldn't lie down. Sitting is also tricky. Here too, the motion reference shows a person pointing around. If I choose match image to preserve the pose from the original photo, this is what I get. Unusable. 
if I switch to match video, we end up here. Better, at least the legs are visible, but still not what I was aiming for. In cases like this, my advice is simple. Stick with the standard image to video mode and write a matching prompt. For instance, the man slowly lifts his head, then starts pointing fingers toward invisible opponents on all sides. The camera is stationary. That may be a different motion sequence, but it still looks more convincing than the AI's motion matched result. Let me clarify something that can be confusing at first. What's the difference between character orientation matches video and character orientation matches image? This example shows it quite clearly. The motion reference, meaning the video where the movement comes from, is a centered composition with the character facing the camera. The image reference, however, shows a figure walking to the right with a slightly angled side view. If I now select the video as the reference, the AI forces the starting pose into this very symmetrical setup. The result, the banana is basically reconstructed from scratch. If instead I select the image as the reference, the AI transfers the movement into that angled pose. By the way, all the clips we see here are five seconds long, simply because the motion reference is five seconds long. I have to admit I laughed pretty hard. If your uploads get rejected as unusable, just use something with two legs, two arms, and a humanoid look and feel. That usually does the trick. Aside from the banana, we've got an equally enthusiastic bear in armor, the same character turned into a slice of pizza, a cable man made of wires and plating, and a wonderfully absurd toilet roll man built from stacked rolls. The only thing that occasionally breaks realism is the way the character moves across the ground. That still glitches sometimes. Something else I noticed. If you write camera is stationary in the prompt, only the character gets animated. I ran multiple tests and every time the background stayed frozen, so I'd recommend leaving that line out. Under the two image slots, there's a prompt input field. But to be honest, it behaves a bit randomly. What works once might not work again, even with the exact same prompt. In both cases, I used, suddenly, from the right side of the frame, a large green combine harvester enters at full speed and crashes into the ocean. Water surges upward and sea spray rises naturally around the impact. One time, I just got a small splash. The next time, the harvester charged across the frame in full glory, leaving behind a dramatic wall of spray and water. For another test, I followed the official prompt guidelines. Something like a dog runs in and circles the character's feet. But sometimes the dog appears right from the start, and that's not what I want. So I refined the prompt like this. A black dog is not visible at the start. At second one, the black dog runs into the frame. Then I pushed things further. I wanted one black dog, two penguins, three cats, and one monkey to run into the scene. As you can see, the AI completely lost it. It started merging creatures or having them absorb each other in bizarre ways. I also tried this version. At the beginning, the ocean appears calm and normal. At second one, the water rapidly pulls back from the shoreline, retreating at high speed and leaving behind exposed, dried seabed surfaces. Didn't work either. Apparently you need to trigger subtle, focused actions, not change the entire scene. If you try to push too far, you'll hit limits pretty quickly. If you want to try it yourself, head over to the Kling homepage. Click Experience now in the top right corner. On the next screen, you can either select Video from the left-hand navigation or click Video Generation in the center column. Both options will usually take you to the video creation interface. At the top, Video 2.6 is pre-selected, but what we need here is motion control. It's located just below the model selection. Click it and the interface changes. On the left side, you'll find the motion reference section. That's where your video goes. You can upload directly, use your history, or select from your library. On the right side is the input field for the image reference. Again, either by direct upload or from your history. If you want to remove any of the files you've uploaded, just hover over the tile and click the trash icon in the top right corner. Just below that, you'll find the toggle between video match and image match. Underneath is the prompt input field with some helpful guidelines. At the very bottom, 
you can choose between standard and professional mode. Set the number of outputs and hit generate on the far right. Generated results appear in the panel on the right. As mentioned before, keep your prompts subtle. Kling Motion Control is designed to prioritize the information from the video and the image, not from the prompt. A few things to keep in mind. For the image reference, make sure the person's head and body are clearly visible. Animation currently only works for one character. Here you see examples of what counts as a valid reference and what doesn't. The orientation of the character matters. They shouldn't be lying down or upside down. For the motion reference, follow these tips. Avoid cuts and camera movements. Avoid overly fast motions. Steady, moderate movements yield the best results. The video length should be between 3 and 30 seconds. Kling Motion Control isn't a classic image to video feature. It's a targeted system for motion transfer. And that only works if the roles are clearly separated. The image defines the appearance, scene, and character. The reference video provides only the movement. Kling analyzes this video and maps body dynamics, timing, gestures, facial expressions, and lip sync as directly as possible onto the person in the image. This isn't about interpretation or style. It's about reconstruction. And that's exactly where the system shines. Complex motion sequences, fast changes in direction, spins or subtle hand movements stay surprisingly stable. Hands, arms and facial expressions appear more consistent than in prompt-based image-to-video generation. The prompt here mainly serves to control the background or add extra information. At the same time, motion control has clear limitations. It's not style transfer, not freeform animation, and definitely not a replacement for keyframes or proper directing. If your reference video isn't clean and readable, the system won't work. Kling doesn't invent motion. It simply transfers what's already there, including flaws, shakiness, or off perspectives. The quality of the output rises and falls with the quality of the motion reference. Used right, motion control feels less like a creative tool and more like a simplified version of motion capture for image to video. Not universal, but highly precise when it comes to believable, physically coherent movement. Though to be fair, some results do end up morphing quite a bit. If you've seen some of my recent tutorials, you'll know I tested a similar platform not long ago. Kinetics, links in the description, also gives you full control over motion and stands out with its clean, user-friendly interface. Definitely worth a try if you're not fully convinced by Kling's motion control just yet. That's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for listening. See you soon. Your channel, AI, now you know.